This video will be for the lining sample. So for this one, we're gonna have a front bodice lining. So it's all one piece, and we can tell that it's lining because it's all labeled in blue. Make sure to cut your notches, and there's one right on that line where you piece together the two sides. So make sure to cut that notch right at um, center front for this particular one. And then we have our back lining piece, which is also all labeled in blue. And this one is cut too, so you will need to cut one face up and then flip to cut that second one face down. And again, make sure you cut those notches because matching up those notches will help us quite a bit whenever we go to stitch this curve. And then we're gonna need something to stitch these lining pieces to. So we will have our facings. So lining typically gets attached to facings on the inside of a garment. So this is my back facing. And this one has a fuse direction, so there will be a fusing piece that goes with it. And this one is cut too, and it's the all-in-one facing is the pattern piece you're looking for. So there's the back, and here is the front, which is one large piece. And again, this one has notches right on that center line where you piece together these two, so make sure to cut those two notches there. And then this has the fuse direction as well, so there will be a fusing piece that goes with that. This is the fusing piece for the back and the fusing piece for the front. All labeled in red, which is how we know to cut it out of fusible interfacing. Okay, the first thing we need to do before we can stitch anything together is fuse our pieces. So I'm gonna take the cotton piece and the coordinating fusing piece. We're gonna start putting those together. Remember, you're attaching this to the back side of your cotton. And we want the fusible interfacing to go bumpy side down so that the glue dots are touching your fabric, not your iron. Make sure to rub those corners to ensure that it has truly, you know, stuck together before you move on. If it starts coming apart on you and it's not fully stuck together, then go ahead and iron it again or press it with the iron. Let it sit there to melt that glue and get those to stick together. Next is our front facing piece. This one's a little wrinkly, so I'm just gonna iron it before we get started so that I have a nice flat surface to attach my interfacing.
Okay, once we have that fully interfaced, then we're ready to start pinning our lining to our facings. So this is my center front piece. I'm gonna go ahead and grab my center front lining. And you can see how this is going to fill in that shape. So wherever the facings end, we've got our neckline, shoulder, armhole. So that is what an all-in-one facing is about. It's that neckline facing combined with that armhole facing because if we tried to have two separate facings here, they would overlap in the center and it would get too bulky right in the middle of the shoulder. So we usually have a two inch, two and a half inch facing going on each side that does not have a closure of some sort. Or So if we have nothing finishing the neckline, like a collar um, or a hood or something like that, and we don't have any sleeves, then we need some way to finish those two edges. So that's when an all-in-one facing comes in. Okay, and our lining should finish those edges or should meet those edges of the bottom of the facing. So now we're going to flip this right sides together and you'll see how we have opposing curves. So this is why those notches are so important because matching up these curves without notches would be very challenging. Okay, so we're gonna start at those notches. There's one right at the center. About halfway on each curve, you will have a notch. So I'm gonna pull that lining over. It's still right sides together. And then we're gonna match up that corner. And we'll do the same for the other half of this facing as well. notch and corner. Okay, so now we've got this kind of funky shaped piece. Whenever we lay it flat, you'll see how it lays nice and flat, even though it's a curve. But when we're trying to stitch it together, we've got these opposing curves trying to, trying to meet up with each other. So I like to put lining on top typically and then when I stitch it, I'll do the opposite. Lining will be on bottom. And I'm gonna curve it over my finger and pin, and we're just kind of pulling that lining up so that the raw edge of the lining meets the curve. And you'll see my pins get pretty close together during this part because I wanna have as much control as possible. Okay, so that's one little portion. I'm gonna move on to my next section. And this one, your lining has a has the um, convex curve, so it's going out, and your um, cotton has the concave curve, so it's going in like a cave. So you'll have to bring your lining down, on, in this case, to meet the edge of the cotton. And we'll do the same on the other half.
Okay, when we're done pinning it, it's gonna be pretty curved, almost like two letter S's in a row. Um, so now we're gonna take this over to our machine and we're gonna put that lining on bottom and we're gonna start stitching a half inch all along that edge. Okay, I'm gonna start with lining on bottom, stitching at half an inch. I'm gonna get my back stitch in there first. And then once I have that, I can start curving that up so that it feeds into the machine at an angle. And the most important thing you're gonna to have to do during this, <clears throat> or I guess two most important things, is check your raw edges, make sure they're staying even. Especially with lining, it's very slippery and it will want to pull away from the edge of your cotton. And then the other thing is, excuse me, is um, feeling right in front of your foot to make sure that you don't feel any tucks forming as you go. So I'm just gonna adjust my little lining edge because it was starting to pull away. You'll see me adjust that as we go along. Okay, now we're gonna take this off and we're gonna head over to our ironing board. Okay, <clears throat> over at our ironing board, we can lay this flat and you'll see how that curve now forms, um, the lining curve forms to the curve of the cotton. And you can also see how we have either waves or taut areas of fabric. So where there is a wave, we need to take out triangles and where that fabric is taut, we need to cut slits in it to allow it to spread as we bust this open. And the, the side that you're taking triangles from will switch depending on the, the, fate, the direction of the curve. So right here where it's kind of curving up, we will take triangles from the yellow because that's the one that's waving. But right here where it starts to curve down, the blue lining is the one that's waving. So in this area, we will take triangles out of the lining. And then same on the other half. So right here, triangles out of the lining. And down here will be triangles out of the yellow cotton. OK, 
Okay, right here is where I'm gonna start switching to those triangles. And I'm being very careful not to cut my actual uh, lining fabric. We just wanna cut the seam allowance. Okay, and again, right here at this notch, that halfway notch, where the curve starts to change direction is where I'm switching between triangles and slits. Okay, and then on my other side, my cotton side, again, slits in the center and triangles out at the edges. And you want the tip of your scissors to go all the way into that stitch line to help release that tension without cutting through your actual stitches. Okay, clean up all those little triangles that are now coming off of your fabric, and then we'll be ready to start busting this open. Okay, this one, even though it is a curve, it is a curve along a flat surface versus a curve to create 3D shape. So since this one is along a flat surface, we can go ahead and press it flat against our table. We're just gonna start busting this open, pressing it nice and flat. Make sure that your iron is not too hot because you are pressing on lining and we don't want to melt our lining. So double check the temperature. <clears throat>
Okay, once we have that fully pressed, we should be able to turn it over and our lining should be laying nice and flat. If you have any areas that are still kind of puckering, so I have a little bit here that is still kind of puckering on my lining, then what that means is I need to go on the back side and add some more clips into that area because I didn't fully release the tension. Um, so in this area, I can go back on the other side. And in that area, we were taking out triangles. So I can add a couple more triangles in there, get them a little closer together to release some of that tension. And the same goes for slits. If you have an area where you need some extra slits put in there to allow it to spread, you can always add some extra in an area where it is puckering and then repress. Okay, now we can move on to our back pieces. I'm gonna grab one of my back lining and the coordinating facing piece. So again, oops, wrong one. That curve should face the same direction to fill it in. So just like we did on the front, we're gonna lay these right sides together. I'm gonna put my lining on top when I'm pinning. Our reference points that we need to start with are those corners and the notch in the middle. It is very important that you start with those because if you just try to go from one end to the other, your curve will not match up properly. So notch in the middle. And then I'll get my other corner here. And then just like we did with our front piece, we are going to bring that lining to the edge of the cotton and roll it over your finger to help form that curved shape and just start pinning. Okay, so now we've got that pinned. We're ready to take it over to our machine and stitch. Again, I'm going to start with lining on the bottom. We're stitching this at half an inch. I'm gonna start with my back stitch to hold those two pieces together, and then I can begin curving it up and feeding it into the machine at an angle. Again, I'm still using my finger to feel for any tucks and I'm double checking my raw edges before it goes under the foot of the machine to make sure that they are still even.
Okay, make sure to double check your stitch line before you move on for any tucks. If you do have any tucks, now is the time to fix it before you move on. Okay, once we have that stitched, we are ready to clip just like we did for the front pieces. So again, this looks like the, just like the front except half of it. If you look at this front piece, it's the same shape. We're just doing half of it. So just like we did for the front where it's waving, we're gonna take out triangles in here. And then where it's taut, we are going to do slits. And I know on my last one, I had some of that um, puckering. So I'm gonna get them a little bit closer together this time. So maybe we don't have to go back and fix later. Okay, and then I'm ready to bust it open. Okay, there is my finished back piece. So I'm gonna do the same for the other half of my back. You will have two separate back pieces. So complete that same process for the other one. And then you'll be done with your lining sample.